So you're the boss now, are you? Evening, sir. Yeah, just take me straight there. Sure, boss. Say, so, you know Frankie Yale, right? He just rolled into Chicago, but he's hiding out. I'll find him for you if you help me with a little favor. I got better things to do. Hear me out. I got a line on a few crates of booze. They're yours if you help me out. What do you say? Fine. What do you need? There's a gang that's been messing with my cab. Slashing my tires, stealing stuff. They're trying to rattle me. I'd appreciate it if you took care of them. Fine. I'll take care of it. Thanks, Mr. Capone. Say, looks like we're almost there. It's been a pleasure. Good luck to you. Likewise. Come on, let's go. What are you waiting for? I hear you've been looking for me, Paddy. Can we skip all the bullshit and go straight to why I'm here? There'll be a man coming over from home in a few weeks that you should meet. I buy the crate of Tommy guns. He'll have the other half of this five dollar bill. And you'll have to take care of him. Okay. What do I do in the meantime? There's a few fellas setting up a speak the next street over. I'll give you cash to clear them out and set up a brewery to hide the weapons. Sounds like a lot of work. But give me cash, and I might be able for it. All right. Christ almighty. Only because of your work for the Republic. Let's shake on it, so. Fucking hell. You'll fit right in in Chicago. See you when I see you. Hey, how you doing? Angelo, please. You need to cool off. You're worse than Gabriel himself. Fuck Antonio. Are you gonna help or not? I know of a guy. A bull patrolman. His brother's a detective, but he likes to gamble. And he owes some money to a small crew. We take on that debt, then we can squeeze him to find out where the witness is that saw Gabriel do what he did. Thanks, Antonio. It's for Gabriel. Goldie Garneau, the one and only. Miss Garno, it's great to see you. Sal, mon ami, it's Goldie. It's been a long day, and it's far from over. To my racket, please. Uh, are you on stage tonight, Goldie? You got time to change? Because, uh, if you don't mind my saying, your dress has blood on it. Tabarnak, this dress is new. Luckily, I have several the same. Well, I suppose in your game, you must have a brand. I had a disagreeable encounter with a business partner, but they see things my way now. Entertainment sounds like a cutthroat business. Cutting throats is a cutthroat business. You know Chicago, Sal. Too well, huh? Someone may reach from behind with a razor and... 
I uh, do like uh, getting to know people. Do you wonder if you know too much, Sal? It's hard to keep a secret if someone else wants it. Ah, old Sal gets on with everyone. But I can't really say I know much about you at all, Goldie. That's for your own good. Less to share under duress. What do you know? I know you're a proud Quebecois from Montreal. That you love to sing and perform all over Chicago. And in the middle of it all, you find the time to explore other underground business interests. Beyond that... Hmm. It sounds like you know plenty. There's a long road between Chicago and Montreal. You still have people there? That road has been traveled. The past, Jma Fish. Leave it where it is. I can't go against the current. I wish I had that freedom sometimes, Goldie. It takes bravery to let things go. Do you think yourself brave, Sal? Where would I go? My people are here. Everywhere you go, there are people. The world is full of them, and there are troubles for you to deal with. You may be right. My sister owes money to a crew for some liquor. She and her husband set up a casino, but the place burned down before it opened. Now these guys want their money back at twice the rate. I think the crew stole back the liquor she bought and burned the place themselves. But I can't do nothing. And you make her problems your own? Of course. She's my sister. I can take care of it for you, Sal. Put these swindlers out of business. You do that for me? What would I have to do for you? Someone may tell you a secret that I need to know. Promise you will share it. Deal, Goldie. Everyone has secrets. I'm sure I'll pick up a couple. Here's a little money too, in case it costs you. Oh, Sal! Usually the passenger pays the driver. <laughs> Drop me near the depot on the corner. See you again, Sal! Good choice. I don't know how much longer I can take this. I don't have time for this, brother. Just tell me what you want. Fine. Have it your way. Our shop was destroyed by some thugs in the neighborhood. I don't know who they were, but they threw this poker chip at me. Talk to Sing Doc. They call him the scientific killer. He should be able to tell you who the gang was and how to find them. You know the rules, Kong. Huh? I won't be doing this for free. <laughs> so much for family. Fine. Luckily, some of us in the neighborhood got together some cash in case... Well, in case you were too busy to help us. Figured we'd buy some tough mercenaries to help out. Here. I'm the only mercy you need. But family or not, when you employ the Hipsing Tong, the Hipsing Tong gets paid. Sure, that's what you always say. Look, it doesn't matter. What matters is you're gonna put these guys in their place. I'll feel a lot better when they're dead and buried. Dead and buried is a Psy Wing Mark speciality. Maggie Dyer. At your service.
Where to, Maggie? How's the circus trade treating you? Just wanna chat, Sal. You've got your ear to the ground. <laughs> Some would say my ears are underground. Right. Anything going on that I should know about? You seem like someone looking to keep their mind occupied. I have plenty occupying my mind. I'll bet. Speaking of, Helen got in touch with me. What did she want? Why, to see you, of course. She said it's a matter of life and death. Any idea what that could mean? No, and I don't really care. Well, you're still gonna see her, right? I suppose so. You're a good woman, Maggie. Now, where can I drop you off? I'll walk the rest of the way, Sal. Thanks. You and me? We're gonna clean up this town. Ah, Mr. O'Banion. You know I'm always happy to meet with you. Uh, what troubles you, my son? I just wanted to see how you were doing, Father. Anything I can do to help the church? Of course, my son. I do have something that you can help with. I'm sure you must have noticed that den of sin and treachery that has crept into our beautiful neighborhood. God's will states that it must be destroyed. Can you do this for the church, my son? And will that absolve me from missing Mass last Sunday, Father? Hmm. I suppose it will, my son. Then consider it done. You're a good lad, Dean. Here, for your trouble. I can't take that, Father. The church needs it more than I do. Good lad. But you'll take it anyway. God is with you on this journey, my son. Thanks, Father. I won't let you down. Good decision. Reagan, it's good to see you. We're both busy men, Bill. Can we skip the chatter and get right down to business? Fine, I can take an early lunch. There's a crew of bootleggers in a joint nearby, and they're playing rough, even for Chicago. The city needs them gone. Really gone. Not just in jail and out again. I figure you could take care of it. I'll give you cash for your expenses, and I owe you a favor. I'll make sure and make the most of it when the time comes. It's time to clean up this city. Good evening, Daniel. Mayor Thompson. I'm surprised to see you at the Dunbar Club. It's Bill to my friends. So, what should I call you then? It's not clear right now, Mayor Thompson. Come on, Daniel. Don't be like that. I wanted to come by in person to say I was sorry to hear about your father. Thank you. He did his best, supporting his family and community as long as he could. 
You think he would have given free funeral services to every other family in the second ward? It's my parlor, my business. It's what he would have wanted. It's a family trade. Doesn't sound like business at all. Not one that lasts long, anyway. It's a loan. How would it be if we weren't able to bury our father when the time came? People need this. Like they need your hooch and whores and illegal policy records? Of course, I don't know any of that. It's as savory as your business, Mr. Mayor. I think I'm the more honest of the two of us. I'm going to be honest with you now. Jackson the businessman is smarter than Jackson the humanitarian. I'd like to speak to him, please. I'll check if he's in. What's your request? I have some issues in my administration at the moment. There's an opportunist, Mr. Jerry Johnson, who doesn't share my vision for the city. He's threatening to go to the papers. I'd like you to stop him before he impacts my re-election campaign. Just scare him. Nothing too extreme. I know Jerry. I let him borrow some money to pay for his kids' medical bills. Good. Then you've got leverage. Leveraging a sick kid? Come on, Bill. I'm not a monster. I'm not saying threaten him or anything. It's just good to have in your back pocket. You get me? How much can the city spare for this important work? I thought you had the interests of the community at heart. Aren't I the community? You are when it suits you, coming in here looking for my help. I'll give you... You do think I'm a charity. Bet it on the wheel. You might get lucky. The wheel might be more generous than you when it comes to giving me what I want. Is this about me endorsing you as committeeman for the second ward? Daniel the Humanitarian, sure, but Daniel the Businessman... Be careful which one you decide to deal with, Mayor Thompson. Give it time, Daniel. With the election, we need discretion. Keep the money. I need your word. When the time is right, you'll give me your endorsement. I promise. I'll take care of it. You help me, I help you. That's the deal. Take the money anyway, huh? The goodwill of the people. Call me when it's done. You can trust me, Daniel. Now, is there a back door out of here? Sure. Let me show you out. Maxim Zelnik. Maxim, you're looking well. It's good to see you after so long. You look... The same, Ella. I'll take that as the compliment that I am sure is intended, considering you invited me here. An invitation I gratefully accepted, despite my full schedule in Chicago. Which I appreciate. Drink? A martini with ice. Thank you. Business is booming, I assume? I don't like that word. Not in this town. Too violent, too accurate. But things are going well. I don't like to take any chances when it comes to gambling. Neither should you. Competition is only fun if you win. 
you weren't a bad teacher. Maybe not as good as you thought you were, and never afraid to pat yourself on the back. You were a wide-eyed innocent then, Maxim. It's a shame to see you become such a cynic. Is this why you've acquired a protege of your own? To buy back a little misspent youth? Ruben's a good kid. Smart. In that way, he does remind me of myself. Then I don't need to warn you to be wary. Young men have ambitions. Your advice is appreciated, but unnecessary. Then why did you invite me here? For another perspective. Like how flipping a coin shows you what you really want to do. Whatever you tell yourself. If I was you, I'd make it my business to own the gambling in my neighborhood. No one makes a bet that you don't profit from. And do it quiet. No need for things to go boom, necessarily. Not unless they have to. Already in progress. Well, that's all you get for one martini. Apart from this, watch out for your protege. Students are impatient to become masters, in my experience. I'm a better judge of character than I once was, Ella. Let's take this city. Mrs. Riley, where can I bring you? You know my haunts, Sal. Take me into town. Of course, Mabel. How are you holding up? I'd rather not talk about it, Sal. I understand. How about Shirley? Is she doing okay? Her son was killed in a car bomb. How would you be? I can't imagine it. Dave was always a good guy. But to go out the way he did, it's just terrible. I hope you kill the son of a bitch that did him in. Do you know anything about who killed Dave, Sal? Anything at all? I know a lot of things, Mabel. I hear just about everything that happens in this town. From the mayor's office to the sewers running underneath this city. But I don't know who killed your husband. Well, I wish to God I did. I know you do, Sal. It ain't fair. The guy was always good, always fair. Always took care of his own. How the gang doing, anyway? They warmed up to you yet? Some of them blame me for what happened to Dave. It hasn't been easy. When you find the guy to put Dave in the ground, they'll come round to you, I know it. And in the meantime, maybe you'll grab a word with the Undertaker in town. He might be able to help you. I'll think about it. Sure, sure. Now, I hate to ask, but I got a request for you, Mabel. If you're willing, a little delivery. What is it? Shirley got some booze delivered last month. It looks like there was a special box of some fancy stuff left behind. It finally came in, so I need to get it to her. You're bound to run into her, so maybe it's best if you just take it to her. And I'll throw cash in it for you, too. Why is Shirley getting booze delivered? I'm not sure. I figured it was for you. Or for the alley cats. I won't be taking a tour for that cheap, that's for sure, Sam. All right, all right. How's about this much? Fine. I'll take a tour. Ain't that swell. Thanks, Mabel. I'm grateful. Now, where can I drop you off? Here's fine. Thanks, Sal. Soy yo, Elvira Duarte. Thank you for seeing me, Mama Alvira. I need your advice.
I heard about yours and Raul's good news, Delia. Thank you. I wasn't sure that you would be pleased. You're having a baby with my adopted son. This is good news. But sneaking around, this makes me unhappy. We traveled all the way from Mexico together, Mama. It wasn't planned. It happened, and we don't know what to do. What have I done to earn the suspicion? Don't I treat you well? Didn't I keep my word to Raul's mother? You do treat me well. And you have looked after Raul like he was your own son, Mama. But still, he worries. I care about you both. Don't make me regret it. We wouldn't, Mama Elvira. We need to be able to support our family. What do you think that we should do? There's a racket. We will take it. He can run it, earning more for the three of you. But I know we are not yet as strong as we were in Mexico. Please, don't put everyone in danger for us. Nonsense! As we expand, we must be careful of the attention we attract. But these are nobodies. They won't be missed. Yes, Mama. Tell Raul to meet me there. Good choice. Mr. Salt, it's always a pleasure. Heading to the back of the yards, I presume? Not today, Sal. Take me here. Of course. Up to anything interesting today, Mr. Saltis? It's Joseph to my friend, Sal. And I'm seeing Dingbat today. He's got business to discuss. Good old Johnny Oberta. You know, I tried to vote for him in the last city council election. His name wasn't on the ballot. What do you make of that? Dingbat doesn't play by the city's rules. That's why he's perfect for the job. Yeah, I guess you got a point there. I can't get a beat on that guy. No offense. Sometimes he's the nicest guy in the world. And other times he'd rip your head off if you looked at him wrong. Speaking of ripping heads off, anyone ever tell you that you talk too much, Sal? It's been mentioned before, sure. I'm just making conversation. I'm just messing with you, Cell. You should see the look on your face. <laughs> Good one, Mr. Saltis. Say, looks like we're just about there. It's been a real pleasure. I'm sure I'll see you around town. Please, Cell. Call me Joseph. Good choice. You're awfully quiet back there, friend. Don't got much to say, huh? That's fine. But I have to know where you want to go. Ah, take me to this place. Now, leave me in peace. Sure, I do have a job offer. A brothel is opened up near my mother's place. You help my pal ZZ close it down. I'll give you 500 each. And if you take over the place, Please don't build a brothel there. I'll look into it. Good. Sal Mancha is my name. I'll be in touch. Sal as a reina is mine. Nice to meet you. Como va? It's good to see you, mon ami. I didn't know who else to talk to about this. 
Is this about your loss of a husband again? <gasps> Unfortunately, oui, madame. Winston has been getting ideas lately. I do not know where they're coming from. Men do this. There are no difference here in France or hell, even in Harlem. Ha, huh, je sais. But Winston was different. Oh, I thought he was anyway. And once the baby came, I thought he would want to be more involved at home. But he just got further and further away. You're a smart woman. You should not expect so much from men. They will disappoint you. Bumpy never disappointed you. He waited on you hand and foot in New York. You told me yourself. Hush now. We are not talking about Bumpy. What can I do to help you? Wait, I need you to talk to Winston. He's starting to worry me. He's left the court shocks, madame. So? He wasn't pulling his weight anyway. Please, madame, be serious. He got it in his head that he should join up with his cousin, Dutch Schultz. He's running a protection racket around Chicago, but they're not pulling any punches. The terrorizing shop owners. And I just don't think Winston knows what he's in for. Did you say Dutch Schultz? We. Oui, he had a gang in New York. Do you know him? I have not heard you speak of him before. He is a ghost as far as I'm concerned. But yes, I know him. So, will you help Winston? Will you talk to him, please? Hmm. Against my better judgment, I will help your husband, Sherry. Merci, madame. Here, I want you to have this other thank you. Please do not hurt him. He's not a bad man, he's just, well, he has a lot to learn. I promise I won't hurt him, Nathalie. Bonsoir. 